All right, welcome to another Friday night episode of Keto Rocks Radio. I'm Jim Hobbs, and I believe down below me tonight is uh, my carnivore co-host, Brian Damage Forsyth of Kicks and Rhino Bucket. And we got a special guest for you all today, uh, David Goodrich, who's not only a, a musician in his own right, but he's he actually wrote the song that we got permission to use, which is a theme song for Keto Rocks Radio. So when you hear our intro and, 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 and out... It's uh, it's David Goodrich's song, um, You're Gonna Make It. So, David, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So it's an honor. Well, it's, a, it's an honor to have you. And, uh, you know, one of the first questions I want you to kind of explain, and first of all, we're, we're honored to be able to have your song as our, our theme song, but uh, can you share with everybody uh, who will be watching this um, the meaning behind that song and why you wrote that song? Yeah, it's it's a it's a <clears throat> close one to my heart. Actually, my my father had passed away, uh, and in that time, uh, he was very upbeat. You know, and initially, of course, as it deteriorated, it went pretty bad. But uh, but he was more like consoling us as we went through this transition that he was going through as well. Uh, so uh, he was consoling us i believe and uh so you're going to make it through this this is this is a part of life death is part of life and uh i'm transitioning um it's so that very much a, a, a kind of motive motivation for the song it's not only to help others but it, to help me to get through you know this this circumstances so and it's basically like a kind of a mantra it's like you're going to make it you're going to make it you're going to make it things things happen you know but you're going to make it you're even going to make make it to the other side too so that's another aspect of it that's kind of a little bit more deep um but it 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 was inspired by that and uh also it was inspired by uh uh the fact that i that someone gave me a ukulele it's a ukulele piece and um that ukulele kind of sat someplace for many years and was never used it was real cheap. It was made in China, and and uh, but I picked it up, and I never really played it, the ukulele, and uh, I started playing this riff to it, and the the song, and and so it musically it developed from that, and uh, kind of made me thought of well this this ukulele, you know, kind of cast aside, not being used all of a sudden was actually used on on a recording that you know potentially can you know ha get out there and move people and and help people and so forth so uh that's another aspect of it it's pretty pretty deep so yeah so i'm I, and then once again i'm honored to have it on your show i'm hoping hoping it, it inspires some, some some things that you know get people through these times you know the tough times that we're kind of passing through so that's where it comes well, from. Well, awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Is that an instrument that you've ever played there, uh, Mr. Damage? No, but but I can relate to, you know, picking up a, a, a strange instrument and then having it inspire, you know, inspire a song like that. I mean, it, it even helps sometimes just switching off to different guitars, have a different feel. And it's, oh, yeah. it causes different inspirations to come out. You think because yeah. each instrument... I. I had a cousin of mine where actually he's a, he's a, he was a spiritual brother, but he was a cousin to, uh, to Peggy. Um, and he, he was the, I think I've mentioned this before. He was the percussionist for, uh, for, uh, Santana. And I know he used to play the flute cause he's native American and his, that's where his passion was. And I know he would have these flutes he, and every, every flute had a name mm. and these flutes literally, um, and the way the native Americans, the guy who, who actually hand, crafted these wooden flutes um he would speak to the trees and, he's, and he would say do you want to be a flute and he would hear a message back and so every tree differently so every flute had a name and every flute had a different personality so you know hearing you guys talk do you guys believe that every instrument has a different energy that says hey i got i got a voice that i want it to get out through you yeah most most definitely yeah, yeah. that's how he, he literally had Nate. Go ahead, David. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. 
Here, here's one that's got a lot of personality. It was given, gifted to me by my parents when I turned 21. It's a, it's a Martin D35. And you can see it's been through the, been through the, the, uh, the washer, but it has its own personality. And it's helped me through a lot of things in life. And Brian, I'm sure you, you have some stuff. Some, some guitars that are really dear to you too. I like that tally, that telling you play is beautiful. Yeah, in fact, I have, uh, I used to, well, I usually have it sitting here in the living room, but I have it, it's today it's downstairs, so I can't just grab it, but uh, I've got this, it's a 1937 Gibson uh, uh, LO. It was my grandfather's and it was handed down to me. Wow, that's that's precious, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you put a value on it, but you'll never sell it. I'm sh I'm sure. No. <laughs> too precious. Too precious. Yeah. Same thing with I've, I've got a drum set. Uh, it's a 1964 Champagne Gold Ludwig set, and uh, it was it was also gifted to me by my parents, or actually my mother, when I was 12 years old. And uh, never gonna sell it. I I teach with it now, give give lessons and so forth. But it's it's. You know, they, they accrue price. They, they, they really can accrue value over years considerably. Yeah. But it's nothing like the value of what's in the heart. Right. right. Yeah. Well, cool. it just has, you know, it's, it's funny that you're, you say that, David, because uh, right here in the corner, I have a, uh, a fishing rod that my dad bought for me. Actually, my parents, but my dad picked it out. It was the first time he really took me fishing. I was probably five or six years old. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a Sears and Roebuck Roebuck uh, fishing rod. So this is back when Sears manufactured products, and it's it still yeah. says. It, and and you know I've moved. I don't know how many times I've moved in my life, but that's the one thing that's never been lost. I mean, I've lost ninety nine percent of the stuff I've ever accumulated, but that's the one item that's made it through it all, and it sits here in the corner and just has. Every time I pick that up, I just feel the presence of my dad. It's just like something that's very special to me. So I will, I, I will never get rid of it. Now, what happens afterwards, <laughs> I don't know. But I, I love keeping that rod and reel just as a, as a, at the forefront for me to uh, feel close to my dad, who's, who's moved on since 1989. So I can relate to all the meanings that you guys are both uh, attributing to your musical instruments. Yeah, yeah. So it's, you said it was the Sears and Roebuck. Yeah. They made everything, man. That that that's the. My father was gifted uh, a, a classical guitar. It was a Sears Sear signature uh, guitar, and he never used it. And so I appropriated it. And that's when I was ten years old. I started playing on my Sears and Roebuck. <laughs> yes, they made. Yeah. All right. There's but yeah, they made houses. I mean, there's there's a bunch of them in, in Old Town Manassas. The Sears and Roebuck house, they're still standing. Right. That you used to buy them for they're like thirteen five or twelve five. You could buy them as a kit and assemble them. And yeah. yeah, my my grandmother's house was a Sears house. Kid really? House. My, yeah. Really? <laughs> is it still is it still standing, Brian? It is, but unfortunately, it's it's been abandoned. It's really sad. I, we we were up in that. It's up in uh, Gary, Indiana. And uh, I posted some pictures several years ago. I was, who was I was with Mark Shanker, and we 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 were going from one place to another, and him and I were riding together in the same car. So we we swung through there, and I just wanted to see my grandmother's old house, and there it was, just completely like just falling apart, abandoned. And so he took all these photos, but it was kind of sad, you know, to see it like that. My brother has one. It's right at, actually up the streets from like uh, like probably nineteen forties or something like that. I, I don't know if it was that late, but it, it's still standing, still working well, still inhabited. It's, they made some strong things, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's you know never would I have thought you know as a kid that you know there really wouldn't be a Sears still here. I mean. Sears still has a little bit of a presence, but they, I mean, are they, there's still some stores, or are they totally gone now? Are they just a catalog? That's a good question. There's a, there's a store here in, near my house, um, but it's not open. It's closed, but it still has the Sears sign on it. I think they actually did go out. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain that they just went out, you know, with the, the, the oncoming, you know, online presence of 
Amazon and, and all the other places where you can purchase things and, and uh, just got swallowed up by it. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, there was nothing like being a kid and getting that wish book in September for you to look at that Sears and Robot Christmas wish list book where they just, you know, you just thumb through it. You know, I, and I, I came from a very, a very modest home, but you know, as a kid, you just look through that book and you're just like dreaming. Oh, I hope I get this. I hope I get that. And you know, it was, it was such a special time through the eyes of a child. So. Yeah. I think I got my bicycle there. I saved up a, a bunch of, bunch, you know, a bunch of allowances and got a bicycle. It's here in love with So great place. I don't know how we got there. And being musicians, we're, 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 we're gone here. <laughs> Well, well, David, you know, we were David and his wife, Sandy, are just wonderful, wonderful humans got a chance to uh, hang out with uh, Pe Peggy and I were honored to have you guys out. We just spent the day out on the lake and uh, oh, and we floated okay, around yeah. and and and, yeah. and David, and I just sat there at the beach and uh, and got a chance to ponder life a little bit. And it was just an awesome time spent with the with the two of them. And, you know, one of the things I found out David does is the Wim Hof um breathing in cold water so david yeah. what got you into wim hof and tell everybody about what you guys do and what it does for you some of your experiences well you know i've got some the, the body's not the same as it used to be back in my 20s and in the days of the 30 and the body, the body well so you know, the more uh lifestyle changes to 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 kind of try to thrive you know and and you know go into lifestyles and and you know, make general health, I think. And also, uh, now with, with specifically with Wim Hof, it really has to do with breathing and singing. Uh, yeah. Singing is definitely, if you ask any singer, if you ask any horn, uh, horn player or anybody that uses wind as their way of making vibration, they're gonna tell you it's all about breathing and breath control. And um, uh, Sandy, uh, she she ran into some studies and, and and ran into Wim Hof on the web, you know, and, and some information. And we started looking into, uh, you know, his method and and someone may call his madness, which it is, it isn't madness. It's it's basically everything. You know, he's, he's, they're doing studies and so forth and finding that, yes, this is true. You know, his breath techniques can affect the autonomic system and affect your immune system uh, very, very strongly. Um, and so we were, we were very much interested in, so we started out uh, doing the, uh, the three sets of uh, 30 uh, inhalations and then holding your breath and uh, when you're holding your breath at the end of each one. And the results were amazing for us. Uh, some some really life changing events came about. I think not only just physically, but it seemed like spiritually too. It seemed like there was some awakening there that somehow came across. And so we've been doing that. Uh, uh, we've been doing it about six months or, or so, I believe, some, something like that, or or more. And don't plan to ever stop and then so and then then also uh, i guess uh, we, you know kind of gradually getting into the uh, cold water treatment too found a lot of relief i have some neuralgia from uh some things that have been going on you know some some pains and so forth and found great relief doing it so i feel better so awesome now, does sandy do that does sandy do it as well she does, she does. we do it together actually um kind of spot each other because it's actually kind of a scary experience. I don't know if when you first did it, we did you have any kind of effects that were kind of, you know, maybe scary a little did it take you in any other place that you No, I understand how it could be scary, but for some reason my whole life, I just love for whatever reason, I was always drawn to like going under the water and see how long I could hold my breath and what I could experience. I just had a piece about it. So, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm from Carolina beach and I used to just, you know, as a kid, I just would play in, in the water and, and I would just go down and see how long I could stay down there holding my breath. And even in the pools of our houses that we've had over the years, 
Uh, I do the same thing. There's a, something about, there was something peaceful about being under the water and just holding my breath and, 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 and see what I could experience. Like I hear my thoughts deeper. Um, and so there was always, a, I was always drawn by that. So when I came across Wim Hof's teaching, uh, I was like, wow, this, this is something I'm very intrigued by. So that's, that was, I, I welcomed it. Now, my wife, not so much. Yeah. Peggy did not want me to go. Cause I, when I first saw what he was doing, I wanted to, it was in the middle of the winter. And I remember I wanted to drive down. She's, where are you going? I said, I'm going to go down the Rappahannock River and do this cold water plunge that, uh, and she's, you're not going by yourself to jump in a river. It's freezing outside. <laughs> and she, she was afraid that, you know, I was going to, you know, stroke out or have a heart attack going in the water or drown. No one's going to be there to protect me. So she's like, no, 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 you're not going down there. So I ended up going down to our pool and, and doing it. Uh, but now, um, and I think I explained this to you yesterday, David, um, you know, in the summertime, I really don't have much choice. But in the winter, I literally fill up our uh, our big old, uh, like, hot tub. But I fill it with, we're, we, we're on well water. So the water that comes out of the ground is extremely cold. So I just fill that up uh, with cold water. And I just, I do all my breathing sessions in that cold water and uh and you know it's hard for you to because look you, i'll be honest with you i don't want to climb in that cold water and submerge myself but you know once i do and, and get over that initial shock value it's amazing how i'm able to center myself and and then i'm able to just i don't even realize i'm cold anymore it's like the water that i once feared is now a, a blanket it like insulates me you know, and it's keeping my yeah. heat in and so it's it becomes like a friend um and so it's it's just i i after i'm done i feel so alert and alive and i just appreciate the experience but you know every morning i'm like eh, i really don't want to do this but i'm so glad i do afterwards if that makes any sense it does it's that, that moment awesome. you get in you get in there and just oh and then and then there's a piece that comes over you it's it's beautiful yeah I'm, uh, I'm, um, I, I love the experience. I love what it does for me for the rest of the day. And, uh, I would highly encourage anyone to go, uh, go on YouTube and search Wim Hof, um, yeah. and, and watch his videos. I mean, the beautiful thing is it doesn't cost any money. Uh, you can go out there and just follow what he's doing on YouTube, the videos and, you know, experience what something you've never done it before. Just try it. And, uh, I know Brian's tried it, but Brian, are you still doing it? I'm not consistent yet. I've, I've done it a few times since the retreat. That was the first time at the retreat. Um, but uh, as far as the cold water thing, that's another thing I haven't really gotten into. I, I've done it a few times in the shower, but I, there's something about the shower that makes it even harder. I don't know why. I, I, think oh, it I, is. I think it'd be easier for me just to jump into either a pool or a tub full. But, that's, that's how I am. I Peggy does the cold shower, but, you know, and, you know, the, the, that cold shower, it's like, there's too much room for you to run. Like, right, you know, right. I'm, I'm touched on the corner, like I'm on the other opposite end of the tub going, I don't want to do this because it's, because it's, I'm with you, Brian. It's much easier just to, to rip the bandaid off and jump in the deep end than it is to sit there and have this like right. shower coming on you. Right. <laughs> I got it. Yep. I got it. I've got a friend who's he's, he's 70, he just turned 70, and he'll post uh, some things on, on Facebook. Him in Thornton River, which is up in Sperryville, uh, uh, it's just coming straight out of the mountains, and there'll be ice on the sides, and he'll be in the water with this big, huge smile, just going, wow. oh, it's, it's like the 47 to 30, 35, feeling great. I've been in for about 20 minutes and about to get out and go have dinner. But wow. the guy's 70. He looks like he's in his 50s, too. So he's been doing that hey. cold water for a while. Hey, David, I think you and I have to go up there and do that trip. I think we have, you and I need to go there and have that experience. Let's do it, man. We'll dig in the mud. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah it's all about digging the mud. Brian and I, I mean, uh, David and I were, were literally sitting on this beach um, about one foot of water off the uh, in, in Lake Anna yesterday. And that's all we were doing. We we're just grounding ourselves, playing in the mud like two kids and uh, having a conversation. And, you know, one of the things that David shared with me, and I hope this is OK to share, but uh, he was telling me a story about. And then yeah. if you don't mind, David, kind of share 
you know, the advice you gave her and what she ended up doing and, and the outcome of the advice that you gave her and what you guys decided to do. Sure. Well, you know, I've, I've been always a big proponent of, of, of food and your lifestyle and, and, uh, and health. You know, uh, my mother, it's, it was kind of like gifted to my, my mother. She was pretty far ahead of her time. Uh, you know, it was in the days, uh, like in the 60s, and she was making her own yogurt and, and, and speaking of vitamin C. And this was at a, a point where that was kind of far out, you know. Um, so, um, you know, I've always been a plate attention. I haven't been able to kind of really have temptations in life to take you away from that. And, and uh, but anyway, she, she, um, we met and she was, you know, dealing with the uh, high blood pressure and, and uh, her doctor had prescribed her something. And I asked, asked her, did, uh, did he ever talk about your diet? You know, uh, what, what you were eating and, and so forth. And so uh, I had gone through uh, uh, the same sort of circumstances while I had high blood pressure. I stopped doing gluten, so I went gluten free. It totally went, totally went down, and uh, lots of great changes in my life as a result. So I suggested to that, you know, for, for her to, to go off of gluten, you know, uh, and it resolved for her. And and so no no need for any medication. She's fine. She's been fine for decades. So um, so yeah, that's that story. It's a, it's a story of you know sharing sharing some of the things I think we, you, 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 you expressed it well is that when we share things, little tricks like that, that can be beneficial uh, and simple that we can all come, come to a better place health wise, I think. Um, yeah. So, you know, one of the, one of the things that David said yesterday was the fact that he said, well, did the doctor ask about your diet or anything about your diet? And he said, wow. no. And it's like, how can a doctor prescribe something where they don't even know what you're consuming? It's like they don't understand that food is fuel um, for your health, and they don't they don't look at food as being uh, maybe the answer um, to your ailments um, and to what may be causing uh, your disease or your problems. And you know, not asking that simple question, but they're so quick to just go ahead and prescribe a statin drug for you to get on you know not really telling you the side effects of what these statin drugs have on you long term on the impact they're going to have on your body you know like yeah. i'm going to go back to what brian talked about last week you know you know they're telling you hey look we think we can kill kill the rats here um but they don't tell you that the snakes that they're giving you <laughs> Are going to cause havoc in and and other parts of your uh, your body or your own island. So yeah. it's 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 why True. it's very important. It's why it's very important for you to be your own advocate uh, for your own health. You're going to have to realize that you're the most important person, uh, and so treat yourself as you're the most important person for you to be able to uh, advocate, be an advocate for your health. Um, for your well-being and that goes for all areas of life and then you know if you find what's working for you don't be afraid to, to, to share that or just live it out and share it like Brian does a great job of that because like you said David you know someone could be going could be on that same path and you share something and they go oh let me try this nugget let me pick this up and try it and that nugget totally opens up to a whole different world a whole different universe and uh, it mm -hmm. solves their issues um, and that's, that's the beauty of sharing. I, that's why I think music is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and talking of, and talking about music, David. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about the, that you offer music lessons and some of the experiences that your students have had by, uh, by taking your lessons, sure. if you don't mind. Sure. I, I, I'm, I kind of refer to myself as a music coach and, 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 Within those, uh, within that parameter, there are a lot of lessons. But uh, and so through 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 my lessons, I give you know bass, drums, uh, voice lessons, uh, uh, ukulele, multi you know multiple instruments, banjo. I just started picking up the banjo. That's an interesting, Brian. Brian, pick up a banjo and 
and start playing with that and you'll you'll get some really different ideas i started doing a version of billy idol's uh rebel yell using the banjo oh, that's it's really, cool it's super haunting man it's really cool but uh, anyway so 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 all these you know if you want if you learn one instrument and you have that focus and that ability to to uh really focus in and know how to learn that instrument it's transferable to many different instruments right so so uh, i coach people I help get people to get to the point where they're open to that point um i work through traumas uh you know some of the kids that i've dealt with uh say you know they've lost a parent or something that's happened that kind of traumatized them and I, their fingers will not move in certain circumstances they cannot i can't move my pinky i can't move my first finger so we're often talking about some of the circumstances that may uh you know impede their their progress and uh so that they can work through that um uh work through work, work through that problem and uh some some of it's pretty deep it's you know i mean uh to be a good musician i think it's a lifestyle uh and that lifestyle has to be you know kind of revolved around music and music has to re kind of revolve around your lifestyle do you find that true Brian, or? um yeah yeah um yeah everything affects everything else you know yeah it, 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 so it's it's Kind of a, uh, and, and some of the students, um, for example, I, I was I taught a kid for a while, uh, Emma, to come over and, and teach him for a little while, and uh, I, you know, I kind of wondered why he lived with grandma, um, and so you know, I, I know my students, I get to know them. I said, you know, what, what's how 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 do you come to live here? He said, well, my mom my mom passed away, and and so. You know, I didn't want to pry too far into it. In the no. next lesson, we talk about, well, where's dad? Well, dad's in jail. And um, so then the next one, I'm not pushing too hard. How did this happen? You know, uh, I, you know, you call it nosy, but I'm more concerned. I, I believe that when you talk things out, because the kid definitely had difficulty with forming chords and, and kind of practicing and stuff like that. So I asked that final question. He says, "Well, Dad's Dad's in jail. He shot my mother." Wow. And, yeah. Oh my! So, so at this point, I I like uh, I'm going. How do you, how did you deal with that? You know, I was I was teared up because how does one want to deal with that at, at the ripe old age of say, I think he was around twelve or thirteen, and uh, he says, "Well." And he stopped, he thought about it, and he, he, he said, well, you know, I go to church, I talk to people, I interacted, and he was kind of consoling me, you know, to a certain degree. And I think that was uh, kind of therapeutic for him to, to kind of like say, well, how am I dealing with this? And how can I, you know, bring myself to a position that I can help others through that kind of circumstance. But, Years later, this was years ago, he was driving down the road. I hadn't seen him for years. Big smile on his face. He looked looking like he was doing really well. He stopped, he, he opened up the window and just thanked me. He said, he, he said, thank you for helping me through that talk. I'm doing wow. well. So those are the kind of things we go through. And then, you know, some of the more simple things like how to play a D chord or, uh, you know, how to do your scales or uh, what's the best way to, to kind of like warm up your voice or, or uh, you know some of the little the the more kind of technical things but we go into that as well so that's what i'm about so it's, well it's amazing how a student can become the teacher and when you least expect that a teacher shows up in your life that you don't even know that you needed so mm -hmm. that's one of those blessings out of the out of, out of nowhere that you know one of those encounters that you weren't expecting that totally blesses your whole day so yes thanks for sharing I, that story yeah, you bet. I, I avoided being a teacher for many years, but uh, actually Sandy convinced me, it's like, you should do it, you know, and I, I've been really blessed by it because it, you, you learn as much as your student does, you know, and it's really great 
potential for growth. So, yeah. That's awesome. I'm going to ask Brian a question. Brian, have you ever, you ever played the banjo? No, but I would love to learn. I, I'm fascinated yeah. by the, the finger picking part of it. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. Like, like that's, that's one of the, one of the, lazier parts of my learning experience was the I never took time to learn to finger pick although I've over the years developed the pick and finger thing but the banjo is fascinating to me <laughs> well you know it's funny you say that as a kid I remember you know I, I came from modest means and I remember my parents someone threw out a banjo it was an old banjo and I remember my 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 parents went and picked it up out of the trash and and uh took it to the music store and needed a new bridge and, and new strings and they got tuned up. And so they signed me up for, uh, for banjo lessons. Um, now I never learned how to perfect playing the banjo, but it gave me an experience to the banjo. And I used to love, um, I, I guess it's Roy Clark on. He oh called. yeah. Yeah. His pick, his, his pick into the blue uh, banjo. So as a kid, even as a kid, I just appreciated that ability um, you know, I love all music, and so to, to hear Roy Clark play the banjo and make it come alive, when I, you know, mine sounded like it was a dying toad when I was trying to, to learn how to play it, but uh, it really gave me an appreciation of the amount of work and effort it goes into learning how to make it look effortlessly like Roy Clark did. Yeah. Um, so... He's, 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 Roy's a local guy to D.C. I think he grew up, uh, it's like Bill Marva Peninsula. So, yeah, so, so incredibly talented, right? So, Is he still alive? No, I think he passed a while ago. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Don't quote me on that, you know, but All right. I, th I, th I think I was sad, saddened by, a, you know, his passing. So he was terribly gifted, terribly gifted. So, yeah. Talking about somebody else that's totally gifted, uh, Brian. Why don't you share with everybody about your? Uh, you got a chance to partake in Steve Cropper's 80th birthday celebration last night in Nashville. Oh yeah, they did. They did it at the Ryman Auditorium, which is you know the old where they used to do the 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 Opry, but now you know they have the Opry is in like a new new facility. So this was at the old one, and uh, yeah, it was. I'm um, just to go there and see a show in that that room was cool to begin with but uh you know i'm a steve cropper fan from the 60s i i love i just his playing style is so simple but just perfect for the song and his songwriting abilities i mean the the the, the hit songs that he's written it, it it's just amazing but uh yeah it was one of those things where he you know he had a, a there was a basic backup band on stage and then you know, different guests would come out and, and do songs and uh, yeah, it was just, a, and they did it, it was funny because they did it in kind of two parts. Um, the first part, it was, it was all the different performers came out and did a couple songs each and Steve Cropper and his wife were just sitting on the side of the stage, like on the stage, like watching it. And then, then he took a little intermission and when they came back, um, he, he got his guitar out and he was up there doing songs and, and the different people would come out and play songs with him. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool. That's, that that sounds place, so now, now is the great, so this is where the original Grand Ole Opry started from? Is that the yeah, same the, 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 Yeah, the Ryman Auditorium. Now that, did that used to be a church? Cause I saw like the, the, the windows and the, and the, uh, yeah Not the bleachers the uh yeah the pews the pews thank you yes that's the word i was looking for yeah so it, and they still so that's the original way it used to look huh yeah the old wooden yeah it's not the most comfortable place to watch something but <laughs> well probably good set, that, that what's what that you david say? probably a good good sound good uh, natural reverb and stuff like that churches are good for that yeah, and it's wood, and like all the wood and stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, it did sound really good in there. So a lot of warmth in that building. Very a lot of warmth. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Now they have a lot of the Blue Brothers of band members partake last night. No, no. Oh. Which, it, it was um, well, uh, well. Of course, uh, Donald Duck Dunn is had, has passed away. So, 
but um, they had uh, in between each performance they'd have a video on the video screen uh, well I guess because of the whole COVID thing uh, you know a lot of people aren't traveling and so so they had people saying their birthday wishes and uh, one of them was Dan Aykroyd of course but it was cool to see all these different people and uh, the band that he had they oh they were top notch musicians man they were good really good but they all they play together in a band now I forget and, and you know I can't remember what the name of their band was but uh, they each came from a different place and they've all individually played with several different people like the drummer oh, who did the drummer play drummer played with Dolly Parton for a long time and uh, several a bunch of other just as well known people and. They had this bass player that was just, oh, he was such a good bass player. I mean, everything about that whole thing last night. I mean, they had people come out, like Billy Gibbons was there, of course. He seems like he's everywhere okay. these days. Uh, so cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was the guy's name from the Rascals? Um, oh, what's his name? Uh, oh, that guy was good, too. But just, and they had uh, Jeff Baxter. Um, um, that Leroy Parnell guy who's a fantastic slide player. I love the way that guy plays. Just yeah, a friend of mine, a friend of mine used to be his uh, his sound guy, Leroy Parnell, uh, Chris Salomon. He, uh, he Chris Salomon's with the Hollow Notes right now. Um, yeah, he had all kinds of stories with about Leroy. <laughs> yeah, that guy's great. I love. He's just. He's one of those guys that when I hear it, it just inspires me. I just want to go grab a guitar and pick it up. I know, yeah. The simplicity of it is, is cool, yeah. I think, what did you write? Uh, uh, like a put a quarter, uh, um, something about a quarter. Uh, I don't know. And he had a big hit off of that. It was one of his top number one hits. I'm like you. I'm hot. I, names are really rough to pull out of the blues from Give me right. a melody, right? Give me a melody, I can pull it out of the blue. So, yeah. Right, or, or a face, but I can't remember the name. <laughs> hey, there's a song for you, David. The answer is in the song. The melody, <laughs> yeah. the, the answer is in the melody. Yeah, ooh, I'll write that this afternoon. There you go, there you go. Well, how did uh, how did Random Lady like the uh, the show last night? Oh, she Brian. loved it. She, she loved it. Yeah, I mean, how could you not, though? I mean, the, that, the, the 60s, like the, just the music from back then was so uplifting and happy. I mean, you can't help but smile. And, you know, we were just talking about that, how different it is, like the new bands today compared to back then. I mean, those yeah. songs were just, you can't forget those songs. <laughs> You know, it's funny because Peggy and I have, we, you know, we didn't know this when we were dating, but we both have a love for big band music from the, uh, from the 20s. I just, I, there's something about the warmth from that music. Like anytime I hear big band music, it's just, it's just something that speaks to my spirit. I love it. It's like pure, it's, uh, it's uplifting. Um, and it's just, it's, it has such a different energy than the music that's played today. Um, not that I don't appreciate the music that's played today, but you know, if I had to say something where my spirit resonates, it's it's with that old music, especially on vinyl. Hearing that little the crackling on the vinyl, it's just all of it just plays plays such a role. I I just love that. Uh, yeah. You know, it's hard to find bands that uh, these days are big bands that play that same style of music, and and when they do, I just we love going to go hear them, see them play. So it's really it's really interesting that phenomenon. How uh, things will change over the course of the year. You, a lot of it, a lot of, a lot of that has to do with the social structure that you're living with. You know, in that particular time, like in the '60s, I think I believe there was a lot more collaboration in songwriting. So, so mm -hmm. it's not just one songwriter, or it's maybe several songwriters working together that have uh, a bunch of ideas that kind of flow flow together, and so. And, and likewise, uh, with the, the big band era, you had a, a society who was open to that, supported it. It's, it's expensive to put a band on the road. Uh, 
not no less than what they were like 20 20 piece of orchestras and so but somehow that was afforded and so uh and it was needed for that particular time we all needed to you know come together the, the war was there the depression you know uh, was was had, had gone gone through that so anyway sorry <laughs> No, 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 it's a, it, I totally, Brian, you hit like you had something you wanted to say. I was going to say about the collaboration. Yeah. It, uh, when, when Steve Cropper got up there with his guitar, like before every song, he had a story that went with it, which was in most, most of them were about the collaboration process in, in, uh, what was the guy? Eddie Floyd. Is that the guy? Yeah. He was there, but like, um, you know, talking about when he'd fly in and he'd call him from the airport, and you know, they he'd come to his hotel room, and 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 one of them would say, "Oh, I got this song, I got this idea for a song about such and such," and the other guy would go, "Oh, that's right. not going to work. Nobody wants a song about that." And they go, and then they'd throw out another, like, "Well, how about this?" And and it would like all of a sudden this song would be born, you know, from from them throwing these ideas back and forth. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, I mean, these days we're some some of us are songwriters are kind of uh, you know stuck in some some closet someplace, or someplace you know where we're trying to pull out our emotions, you know, and and uh, we're not learning how to, that that collaborative process, and that's that's kind of part of what I do too. I I songwrite with with some of my students. I start them as young as like five years old. Let's 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 learn how to write a song together, you know. And we'll That's write down cool. a, Yeah, I mean that 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 it, that's really a skill. I think that when you instill at a young age like that, it starts to develop, you know. Because songwriting is is very much a, a craft, you know. It's it's not like the first song you have to write is going to be like uh, the best thing, and it's not going to be number one or, or you know. Uh, you know, it, it's like making shoes. The cobbler makes the shoe. Uh, the first one may be kind of, you know, kind of funky. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, you keep on making that shoe, and all of a sudden, you got a great shoe, you know. Uh, uh, and same thing with songs. So, yeah. 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 All right. It's that time of the evening where we get a chance to check in with Mr. Brian Shanker of the Meat Tribe YouTube channel for Meat Deals of the Week. So, Brian, how you doing and what do you got for us this week? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, we were just talking about what everybody's cooking. I'm going to be throwing some pork chops on the on the gas grill. So right after this, we'll be uh, sounds like all of us are going to be eating some good food. <laughs> Absolutely. Is that part of your uh daughter celebration today birthday celebration no they're in they're in school so that's just going to be for my wife and i ah okay <laughs> i'll probably cook her a hamburger later <laughs> all right you don't forget a cupcake anyway. with a candle in it <laughs> yep and cupcake with a single candle all go. right so we've got uh i've got a few deals for you last week was really good as far as ribeyes go and it just seems like the ongoing theme throughout the year is new york strips are always on sale um, but uh, Carnes quality quality stores up in Central PA, they've got some choice grade boneless shoulder pot roasts for five ninety nine a pound, and they've uh, they've got some prime grade boneless top London broils and steaks for six forty nine a pound, and those deals run through the thirteenth of uh, September. And as always, Carnes has probably six, seven, eight different meat deals going on. And that doesn't include pork and seafood and chicken, stuff like that. So that's a really, really good store if you live near one of those in central PA to hit and get a lot of good deals. <clears throat> Down here my way, Food Lion. Uh, I've got some choice grade boneless New York strip steaks for $9.99 a pound. And moving on to uh, Harris Teeter, our favorite store, Jim. Uh, they've got some 80% lean ground chuck for $2.99 a pound. I think they're going to limit you to four, uh, four yeah. packages on that. And they've got some choice grade boneless New York strip steaks or steakhouse roasts for $8.99 a pound. And then they've got, um, they've got some boneless Strauss grass fed ribeye steaks and that's $9.99 per pound. So it's one steak per, or excuse me, per package. So it's one steak per package at $9.99. And all of the 
Um, the food line and the Harris Teeter deals run through the 14th of September. Brian, I think you said you you were just you were putting a rack of ribs in on your smoker, right? Yeah. Well, if you're out of beef brisket, Kroger's got them on sale. Choice grade boneless brif beef briskets for two dollars and eighty eight cents a pound. Wow. Yeah, they they have those on sale a lot. I've got like four of them in my freezer right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're sitting on top of the tongue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Did you ever make that? You didn't make that tongue yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had tongue hey. before? No, that's why I'm stalling because I've never done it before. Okay. I've never had it either. I don't know what to, I wouldn't know what to expect. So uh, are you going to do a video when you cook it? Oh, that's the other problem. That's probably why I'm putting it off even further. <laughs> I, it's it's hard for me to do videos these days. I just, it's it's really time consuming. But but I should because I've never done one before. So yeah, well, Brian, you got to place Brian Shanker. You got to place your bet. See, the bet is whether he's going to get the tongue done first, the book, the golden <laughs> uh, albums on the wall, or uh, there's one more on there. What's the other one, Brian? You got one more in there. We got there's there's four things. That's three of them. Tongue. Is there book. four? Yeah, there's four. We figured there was oh, four out. There was the tongue, to pile book. up. <laughs> there's the tongue, the book, and the uh, albums on the wall. I think there was just three. Know. All right, we'll stick to three. <laughs> All right, but that's that's the bet, Brian. You gotta you can go to Vegas odds and pick one of those and, and try to try to guess which one he's gonna do first. I'm going to put it out there right now. I think the gold albums are going to go on the wall first. That seems like the path of least resistance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back back to the deal. Yes. So Kroger, Kroger also has a choice grade boneless chuck roast on sale for $4.99 a pound. Uh, and then the last store I've got, uh, Giant Eagle, they've, got, they've also got some 80% um, lean ground beef in a value pack for $2.99 a pound. And some prime grade New York strip steaks. I know you're not going to buy these, Jim. They're sixteen dollars and ninety nine cents a pound. But again, that's prime grade. You're always going to pay more for prime. And then the the last deal I have for you is uh, from Giant Eagle as well. Choice grade boneless market district eye of round value pack steaks or roasts at four ninety nine a pound. And the um, the Giant Eagle deals don't start until tomorrow. And they run through the 15th of September. Well, sounds good. Sounds, I, I will tell you, those ribeyes at Harris Teeter, I took advantage of that sale last week. And uh, that's where I will be uh, consuming later on today. They are sous vide and I, right now that I'll finish them on the smoker. And uh, and they're the big two, two and a half inches of uh, thickness I, and, and marbled really well. Oh, the, that's the ones you sent me a picture of, right? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Those things were gigantic. The thickness on those were just, it was unbelievable. Did you send it to Brian? Yes, I did. I, I already posted it, so Brian saw those as well. Oh, okay, cool. All right, well, enjoy those, guys. All right, have a great week, and uh, we'll see you next Friday. Sounds good. Take care, everybody. See ya. Right, we'll see you. Bye. All right. Well, that was Brian Shanker of the Meat Tribe YouTube channel giving us those meat deals of the week. Make sure you tune in to his uh, channel to find other deals or to contribute. Uh, be a contributor to his channel. You know, find deals in your area, please post them as comments on his channel so others can benefit from uh, those sales. And uh, now we're going to get back to uh, hearing more about David's uh, reason for why he's on the show here today. Thanks so much. Well, talk about making something special. David, do you mind? I don't know if it's this for public knowledge yet, but I, hopefully you're okay with this. But you're coming out with your own podcast called 15 Minutes with Goodrich or 15 Minutes with David Goodrich. Do you want to tell everybody what you plan on doing with that podcast? Yeah, yeah it's it's 15 Minutes with Dave Goodrich. Um, my, my stage name is Dave Goodrich, but my Facebook thing is, is my real name, which is David John Goodrich. I've just always done the Dave Goodrich thing, it's a little more friendly, but David, Dave, whatever, call me, you know, call me what you want. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so the podcast, yeah, 15 Minutes with Dave Goodrich, and that 15 minutes of my first album was called 15 Minutes. 
it dealt with uh, Andy Warhol said that we would all have uh, 15 minutes of fame. And I think, right, the flip side of it right now is we'll have 15 minutes of anonymity where we're just kind of relaxing and the rest of the time we'll be on camera, right? And, and being stars. And it's kind of happened. It's kind of, it's a cool thing too. Uh, but so, but the, uh, the podcast is more about musically based, you know, uh, it's uh, life practices of, of musicianship and how you can better your life, how you can better yourself as a musician. Uh, some tips, you know, for, for beginners and, and great professionals too, uh, all the way up, uh, all the way from all different angles. Uh, and then that, that's going to talk about how you live, you know, what you eat, uh, how you practice, you know. It's going to talk about regional and national events that may be occurring. Um, you know, food, certainly, you know, the keto, keto rocks, certainly, uh, uh, you know, I love that to be that in that day, uh, that, uh, or two, because you guys are about rock and rock and healthy, good food, food, you know, uh, uh, food that is sustaining, you know, and, and, you know, gets right to the core. So, so these are the kind of things, um, you know, anything from songwriting to playing banjo to uh, singing. And, and uh, so there's a lot of the things that I deal with, uh, with my students, you know, on a regular basis. You know, some of the traumas, trauma is a big one, uh, you know, to get through for a lot of learning, you know, people who are learning or trying to develop themselves, you know. I know it has been in my life, you know, so I'm, I'm really kind of purely you know, in doing so, I'm kind of being really super vulnerable because it's, these are the things that I've struggled with uh, over the course of my life, you know, to, to become a better musician you know? and a better person, I think, in general, I think. So. Now, I'm still can working. someone sign up? How does, how does people find your channel? Do they just, where do, how do they go about being able to follow you with this new podcast that you're going to be uh, starting? Yeah, you can either go to davegoodrich.com and we'll have some stuff up. But uh, if you want to sign up and get on the list, it's a Dave Goodrich, that all small cat, uh, you know, this is URL, D A V E G O O D R I C H dot A web. That's A W E B page backslash sign up. But uh, we'll also have things on, on my. Uh, David John Goodrich uh, Facebook page uh, to ways that you can sign up and uh, you know we're, we're developing a list and uh, and getting into the point where we're going to go into production so. hmm. awesome well I'm excited I definitely will sign up and definitely look forward to hearing what you got to share with the world and uh, talking about sharing with the world are you uh, are you playing any place this weekend David that we can uh... I actually got a couple of weeks a couple of weeks off. Uh, oh, so, awesome. so I'm going to use that to work on the po podcast and and, uh, and and do some personal growth. I got some, you know, some songs that are that are on my heart that I want to finish up. And uh, but I'm I'll be playing in a vineyard uh, at the end of the month, a couple of vineyards, which I love playing a vineyard. The kind of daytime gigs that are fun, family oriented, and, and usually a good environment. So that's the kind of stuff. That's all. All you can see that on davegoodrich.com. It'll it's got a little tour dates thing out. So awesome, awesome. Well, Brian, what uh, what do you got on the grill this today or this week? What have you been cooking lately? What are some of the cooking projects? I'm going to deviate back to food here for a second. Well, yeah, I haven't really been doing a whole lot of projects. It's just like getting from day to day because I've been busy, like traveling. So. Uh, I'm well. I'm actually leaving again tomorrow. <laughs> so now, where, now, where's, now, where are you guys playing? Where's Kicks playing this weekend? Uh, what's it called? Um, 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 uh, Rock Rock Timber Festival. It's it's up in Hinkley, uh, Minnesota. That's on um, Friday, and then Saturday we're playing. Uh, what is that theater? They moved the venue. Um, it's in, it's right outside of Chicago. We're, we're doing a theater on Saturday, so those are our two gigs this week. So today I'm throwing on, I threw on a it's already on there a rack of ribs, a, um, pork ribs. That's a rarity, but you don't do ribs too often. 
Nah, but they were on sale. So <laughs> that's usually when I grab stuff like that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I actually got some of those uh, Harris Tita ribeye steaks, sous vide. Uh, and right after we record this, I'll be uh, throwing those on the Traeger uh, to smoke and finish them. And uh, Peggy and I will be uh, having a ribeye one meal a day uh, today. So I'm looking forward to partaking in some good meat and talking cool. about that. If someone was uh, watching the show for the first time, uh, Brian, what bit of advice would you give somebody? I would say eat your meat. <laughs> Perfect. Well, hey, David, I want to thank you uh, for coming on and, and sharing a little bit about yourself today. And hopefully we'll have you back later on. But I look forward to hearing what you have to share with the world with your uh, 15 Minutes with Dave Goodrich podcast that you got starting here soon. Hey, you're welcome, man. It's so ple uh, it's such a pleasure to be on there. It's a pleasure to meet you, uh, Brian. And uh, and it's it's been wonderful. Um, I wish you great great success with the Keto family, and I uh, hope it grows and grows and grows. It's great. It's a great cause, a good thing to do. So thank you much for having. Me. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, with that being said, we hope everybody has a great week. And uh, we will see you next Friday. So stay safe, stay well, and stay out of that hospital. We'll see ya. See ya. You go.